body, in this video, I will provide you a minimal survival guide for Swift. Let's start with a little bit of history. Swift was elaborated secretly, as always with Apple, uh, since uh, 2010. And the beta version was launched on June 14, 2014, at the Worldwide Developer Conference. You know, this uh, great uh, conference every June uh, by Apple. And since, uh, here is a bit of version history. So, uh, in September 2014, ver version 1.0 went out. It was totally unstable. Example on my courses this year, compiling in September were not compiling anymore in November with a new release of Xcode. Then, in 2015, a new major version appeared uh, that was gradually going to stability. And in September 2016, the third version was more mature. And since Swift 4, Apple has backward compatibility concerns, so basically almost all your sources are compatible with newer versions that basically introduce new mechanisms instead of new notations. As for Objective-C, we will have a look on the principle, on the main syntactical constructions, and a bit of strings because you immediately need those. Once again, it's just a survival guide, nothing else but a survival guide. There will be a full week dedicated to Swift as an introduction, and most of this course, as I already told you in the video, will be based on Swift. Swift follows a strong trend in programming language these days, which is mixing object-oriented traits with functional traits. In fact, you may know that uh, you have several classes of languages, functional languages, procedural languages, or imperative languages, and object languages that are an extension of imperative languages. And uh, now it started with a language called OCaml, but now it's also a trend followed by Java. There is more and more mix of functional aspects and object-oriented aspects. So to put in the same language the best of uh, each uh, type of language. Uh, it also includes the most recent compilation facilities that allow to have a code that Apple considers to be easy and compact. Okay, you should have a look on the WWDC in 2014. It was hilarious how the main advantage of Swift that was raised out was it was modern. Okay, it doesn't mean nothing, uh, but in fact, to be honest, there is a strong use of new compilation techniques available in LLVM, such as the possibility to have compact code because you deduce a lot from expression. Uh, while in some other language you say, okay, this is an integer, and in the expression you say, this is an integer expression, etc., and there is cross uh, control, etc., etc., here, you just state your expression, and according to the expression, the container is dynamically typed. Okay, so it's very nice because it makes the expression quite compact. Uh, to be honest, it might be difficult to read sometimes, uh, because, of course, not for obvious code, but in, when the code is complex and can have uh, uh, several traits according to uh, the uh, arguments, then it can be difficult to understand what's going on. But Okay, that's true for any language. It's inspired from Objective-C, and in fact, uh, memory management has been uh, added in Objective-C uh, with the automatic reference counting mechanism, and the automatic reference me uh, counting mechanism has been introduced in Swift, but it's built in Swift, so you cannot get away from it. Okay, so it means that memory management is supposed to be easier thanks to these mechanisms. And also, it has the same foundations than the ones of Objective-C. It relies, of course, on the same APIs and library. Uh, so it's very nice because the structure of these libraries are quite similar, but in the Objective-C style or in the Swift style. And then, 
it makes you much easier the fact to pass from one to another. And if you go to any uh, page of the Apple documentation and switch from Swift to Objective-C, you see it's very natural. And after a while, if you have some Objective-C code or the spec of uh, an Objective-C API, you can very easily translate it into Swift and vice versa. Okay, it's difficult to go in Swift without mentioning at least a bit of class. So I will do just the minimum here. Remind it's a survival guide, a minimum survival guide. So this is a class. Here you have some attributes. Uh, these attributes, so this one includes var. So it's an attribute that can be modified later on. And these attributes include the instruction static, so it will be shared by all the instances of this class. Then you have a function add with an integer in parameter. You have a function val that returns an integer and has no parameter. You have here a function reset that uh, has no parameter and returns no value. It is static, so it means that it has the possibility to access to uh, static variables. Okay. It, it's, it's a sort of, a, it's not a class method, but it's in between. And you can have class functions, and it corresponds to class uh, methods, okay? Of course, I will tell you more later in this course. Okay, method invocation is very classical. So here, I'm creating a new instance of counter. Counter is a class, so it's an object, my value. And then I invoke add to my value. I invoke reset to my value. And here, I invoke the attribute val of my value and the static attribute oulala from counter. To, uh, print. And you see that as for Objective-C, when you invoke a class method, you refer to the class name instead of the instance name. It's uh, of interest to produce a trace on the console. So as for Objective-C, if you run your program and print in the console on the device, it will be uh, lost. Or, no, it's not lost. It's stored in the device. But to access to this information, it's a little bit uh, complex. But if your device is driven by Xcode in debug mode, then this information is caught and displayed on a console window in Xcode. Okay, so you have the print instruction. Print displays something in the console. It takes two parameters, a string and a terminator. The terminator states if you have a return carriage somewhere or not, for example. Okay, uh, concatenation, substitution are natively handler. We'll see that. We'll see that later. For example, uh, here I state that uh, I say print Toto is, and I say that the terminator is happy. Okay, uh, so you see that happy will be appended at the end of the sentence. Okay. Uh, here I said print entity2 and the default terminator is a carriage return. Okay, and so uh, this is what is displayed by this sequence of instruction. Okay, it is not very complex, so there is nothing to tell anymore about this instruction. There are no explicit declarations about strings. You remember that uh, it can be deduced uh, thanks to dynamic typing. Once again, strings support Unicode. It's also true for any string in Objective-C. And you have not two types of strings, but two types of variables in Swift. In Swift, you have immutable variables or mutable variables. So, you do not have two classes like you have in Objective-C with NS string and NS mutable string, but it's exactly the same idea. For example, if I declare a variable with let, let immutable, then this variable is a constant. So it has this value and the value will never change. If I say var mutable, then it's not a constant, it's a variable, and then the value may change. And of course, strings that are declared with let are like NS strings, and strings that are declared with var are like NS mutable strings. So a bit of string manipulation. So you have here 
uh, several examples. Uh, basically, I write here exactly the same thing that is written in Objective-C. So, uh, declaration of two static variables, this one and this one, you see the concatenation operator, which is plus here. Here, uh, I can uh, create an instance from a class and then uh, query this instance to get uh, information. If I want a value to be changed automatically into a string, I put backslash, open parenthesis, the expression, and then closing parenthesis. It suppose that the corresponding class implement a specific method that is called toString. So if you create a class, you have to implement this method, but it works very well. And you here have other examples. Once again, if you want to get more information, go to the fantastic manual. And that's all. You almost have the basics to build your first Swift application alone. And you can see the nice PowerPoint of Pink Floyd that has now been totally renovated. It's around uh, London uh, in something that is brand new. And this is a nice ending image for the brand new language that is Swift. Thank you very much for your attention. See you later.